Hey there, welcome back to Larry's Workbench where we do projects that are kind of fun and interesting. We share them with you guys. And today we are still talking about the Floyd Robotics Project. This is Floyd the Droid here. You guys are probably familiar with Floyd from some of his other videos. You know that he is a talking robot. You can talk to Floyd for an hour. Floyd speaks 50 different languages. You can talk to him on any different topic. He speaks 20 fluently, and he's um, kind of conversational in another 30. Uh, most of you guys probably don't speak 50 languages. I don't speak 50 languages, but this, this robot does. And uh, the whole point of this, as you remember, was to see what's going to take to build a little talking robot that sits on a desk. And we did it. Now, Floyd is not executing his software right now, so he's not going to chime in with any comments. Just me. Again, I'll try to keep this kind of fun and interesting. But, you know, in previous videos, we've talked about the hardware. I've demonstrated the hardware that's involved here, demonstrated what it takes to commission the Raspberry Pi and get the Raspberry Pi up and running. And today we are going to drill down a little bit into the development environment. So we're going to start getting a little closer to the software and the API calls of what's involved. But today we're going to talk about exactly setting up an effective development environment for this bot. Now remember, this is my first software development project in probably 40 years. So those of you that are deep into software development and know all these things, you know a lot, lot, lot more than I do. But I'm going to share what was involved in me setting up a development environment for this little bot. Now I'm running a Chrome box over here on the desk. And that's just a simple computer that's basically cheap and suitable for my needs. Some of you guys probably have Apples or um, you have Windows machines, probably even better. Okay, so it's going to be more powerful and more effective. Chromebox is, is fine for me, and like I said, it's cheap. So, But the most important thing in this development environment is having these two monitors. These are two 27-inch Dell monitors, and I paid extra because they don't say Dell on the bottom. These are frameless, and that, that was a cool aesthetic that I liked a lot. And that cost extra, but I paid it because I like them. So we are going to look at how to run this bot. Now you can see, we've talked about the Raspberry Pi. You can see that the Raspberry Pi has on it two mini HDMI connectors there. And of course you can use the USB ports on the back to connect up um, your mouse and keyboard. But I don't have any wires connected to this guy because we're going to run this remotely. This is called a headless installation because I don't want a bunch of wires hanging off to a mouse or a keyboard hanging off my robot. I do have this one power cable hanging off and that's because Floyd is absolutely a battery hog. When he's running on batteries, he's only got about 45 minutes to go and that is just not enough to get anything done. So we do have him on house power pretty much most of the time, almost virtually all the time. Well, we're going to talk about virtual network computing. And that is a technology that allows one computer to effectively log into another computer and run it remotely. And that's exactly what I'm doing here with Floyd the Droid. So VNC, I'm using an app called, uh, I think, Real VNC. I've downloaded that onto the Chrome box and I've configured it so that when I bring the app up, and I'm just going to go ahead and do this and show you guys. When I bring the app up here, it already knows that Floyd is connected to the network and it already knows his IP address. So, so the, those are things you would have to enter in the first time you set this up. I'm going to turn the monitor on, first of all. Then I'm going to double click on Floyd and this brings up the Raspberry Pi start screen. Now remember, I kept this start screen default so I know that when I'm looking at this image of temples, I know that I'm looking at the Raspberry Pi because that's the Raspberry Pi's default background image. And I like it, and it's, it's clearly identifiable. So now we've got Floyd here. Now check this out. This is where the magic happens. So we're going to take this screen, we're going to grab it, we're going to drag it onto this monitor, and we're going to expand it. We're going to hide this one here now. Now we've got two monitors up and running. We've got this one is on my screen, is on just ChatGPT, Garden Variety ChatGPT, or whatever else you want to have on this screen over here that's going to help you for programming. This one, through the magic of virtual network control, 
is now Floyd the Roid. And I can move my mouse back and forth, and I can even cut and paste from one machine to the other. Cut and paste doesn't work fantastic. It kind of works okay, and I'm trying to debug some of that, get that up and running. But that allows me to get over here, and whenever ever I'm over here, I'm actually working on the Raspberry Pi wirelessly. Super cool. I'm going to click over here, bring up a command line, and now to start this up, sudo Thony. Thony is my development environment that I'm using on the Raspberry Pi. Again, it's a low-level environment. It's for beginners, and I'm probably going to upgrade that to uh, Visual Code or something like that. Uh, it's more powerful. My programming buddy is telling me that I'm doing this the hard way, and uh, he's probably right. So, but anyway, Thony has been fine. I'm not going to click that and click it up and running because I don't want to expose my API key uh, on the internet for obvious reasons because I don't want people using my API key. But that gives you some idea of how to set up a successful development environment for the Floyd the Droid project and how to get him up and running, how to get Thani up and running. And of course, Floyd is programmed in Python. Python at the end of the day is just a text file. You can edit it with anything because it's just a text file and it, I run it in Thani and that's how Floyd runs. So there's gonna be another video, let's see, another video over here somewhere. Uh, and go ahead and click on that if you are interested in the next step in the series. Other than that, thanks for watching.